Hello, and welcome to Talking Treatment, the podcast for everything in the field of mental health and addiction treatment. I'm your host, Derek Dorado. Join us in listening to our episode as we will focus on highlighting industry trends with guest experts and healthcare providers from around the nation in the treatment industry who will share their unique perspectives on treatment. Ending the stigma on behavioral health and substance use disorders is very important to us, and the easiest way to do that is by talking about it. That's talking treatment. Today, we have a special guest from Miami Valley Recovery in Dayton, Ohio, Bill Chrisovergis. Thank you very much. Oh, you're more than welcome. So thank you for joining Talking Treatment today. And, and Bill, you're joining us from Miami Valley Recovery, which is in Dayton, Ohio. Is that your, own, your hometown? My hometown, yeah. Pretty much most of my life I've been in uh, Dayton, Ohio. So I've seen the good and the bad. Absolutely. Dayton, and, it, and, and what got you into the industry? Was it, was it being in your hometown and kind of seeing what, what's gone on? Was it family or was it somewhere else you moved? Well, I mean, actually, you know, kind of both. Um, a little family impact from from uh, substance use disorder. Um, I was in the medical field, um, selling in the medical field, so I interacted a lot with the uh, treatment programs. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, you know, when I used to call on uh, clients, um, I used to sit there and talk for 30, 40 minutes to some of the clients and hear their stories and and kind of that just started getting me involved, more and more involved. So I, um, I ended up spinning off that. I actually uh, became a counselor, um, not a high-level counselor, but a counselor just so I can talk to people and mm. take it step by step and then uh, worked on opening my own program. And, and so your, your whole career was you, – you had a career, right, Bill, in a whole yeah. different industry? Oh, yeah, totally. And you, and you decided to just pivot. Correct. Yep. Big, uh, big risk, but, uh, you know, the reward for, uh, um, there's really no financial reward when you see people <laughs> and you see them come out of, uh, out of nothing to something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Simple things like getting a job and getting their kids back. I mean, that's a big deal. Are you doing a lot of work within the community, right? Yeah, we're, we're still, st- we're starting to, I mean, we, we opened, we were formed in uh, early 2018. Um, we got certified through the state of Ohio, which took a, amount of, a good amount of time. So you kind of, things that you learn that you're not used to as you kind of go through. So we're slowly working with um, some of the probation departments. There's a great organization in Dayton, Ohio that's made national news. Uh, called the Families of Addicts, okay. um, FOA, Lori. Um, we've got a great relationship with her and go to some of her meetings um, here and there. And uh, my crew, my staff uh, also attends and provides resources and things of that nature. So, you know, we're, as we grow, we've, we're more and more involved in the community, but we are, we're definitely in the community um, at this point. Not to the scale of how, how much I would want to be in the community. Okay, yeah, and I definitely want to get to your vision of their bill because I think it is going to, you know, fortify. It's going to fortify the community within Dayton, bringing awareness, and it's also going to something that we all are very aware of is it's going to remove the stigma, you know, and sure. that's a huge problem uh, all over the country, and, and you got to think places like Dayton, um, it's got to be tough. Yeah, uh, you know, the the stigma is – you know, again, you know, not being directly involved in the, in the industry or that, on that side of it. Um, I think naturally or you kind of stereotype and it's just kind of a natural thing for some people to do. Uh, I was, I would consider myself in a boat, you know, I would ask my um, family member that was struggling, you know, it's just like, why can't you just stop? You know what I mean? Just stop. It's not, it can't be that hard. And uh, you learn a lot. And um, once I was educated and became more involved in hearing people's stories, um, it makes sense. So that's the big goal is to not stigmatize uh, folks out in the, in, the, uh, in the treatment community. Is there a stigma behind medication-assisted treatment and the work that, that's being done? Oh, totally. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, and that's, a, that's one of those deals where um, to educate the um, – 
talked to the, the industry and people outside of the industry about a little bit more. Um, at the end of the day, we utilize any tool that's appropriate for the client. So that could be medication-assisted treatment, um, including buprenorphine or Vivitrol, um, or even abstinence-based treatment programs. So um, at the end of the day, there's not one size fits all. And we, you know, stuff a certain medication down their throat and, and hope for the best and they're going to be cured and, and all that stuff, or they're just taking another drug, you know, at the end of the day. So we are, our saying here at Miami Valley is the medication, if we're talking about buprenorphine is to get you stabilized, you know what I mean? Not to be sick all the time and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. And then okay. that gives you the tool to be able to work on yourself because at the end of the day, the most important thing is the therapy and basically building up your self-confidence and basically having a purpose in life. And that's what our goal is to help people find out what their purpose is. Um, Simon Sinek wrote a great book and it's all, it's really business, business focused. Um, and it's, it's uh, what's your why, you know, why, mm -hmm. why do you do what you do and why, you know, and I kind of turn it, spin a little bit on, you know, why are you here? What's, what's your purpose? And, and our goal is, you know, the, the, some of the most talented people as a mechanic or a, a drywaller or mm -hmm. a framer or something um, that could spin off and, um, you know, start their own little business or they just need the tools in some of the direction. And, you know, uh, Miami Valley Recovery isn't just about, hey, you know, let's talk about relapse prevention. It's, you know, it's more than that. It's case yeah. management. It's all those type of services. So all, all outpatient, uh, right? Bigger. All outpatient? All outpatient. So which, which I, I tell people, I said outpatient's the hardest, you know it what is. I mean? Yeah. So they're in our four walls during, you know, a, n a number of hours during the day. When they leave that, you know, leave, uh, leave the facility, you know what I mean? They're, it's kind of what the tools we've brought to them on. You know, how do you take it outside the, the four walls? And I've always said outpatient treatment is, is the hardest um, there is. Now, we've had clients where it, it's, you know, based off of their living situations or, or whatnot. Um, you know, we'd have to get them, you know, we, we work closely with some of the, um, an inpatient program here locally called Woodhaven. And we, we okay. get them in there and, you know, they get some 30, 60, 90 days stable where it gets at least some cleared. And then we can work on getting, you know, different living situations, things of that nature. So it's, it's a big team. I mean, it's, it's not an easy, you know, you just check in and, you know, let's talk about a couple things and then we'll see you later. So huge effort. And you know what, on that point, Bill, I really liked, on uh, the Miami Valley Recovery website, little plug there. I love that you had the uh, psychiatric emergency area on your website. Do you think that medication-assisted treatment can really provide a nice uh, uh, stepping stool for, for someone that's having some problems and, and, and troubles and hardships and cannot do the 12th step? Is that, is that a good route for them to go the medication assisted treatment route? Yeah, in, in my opinion, and, and you'll, have, you'll hear different opinions, but in my opinion, absolutely. You know what I mean? You know, in our, in our, what we kind of think of it is, you know, when somebody walks through our door, which is I would consider one of the hardest things to do and saying, listen, I've got a problem. I can't you know, control this and da, da, da. Um, you know, we've always said, hey, you know, we're going to work at first. We're going to work harder than you to get mm -hmm. you a stable but at some point we got to kind of meet in the middle and then you got to work harder than us mm -hmm. um so there's a transition phase type of thing there so um but yeah you know to, to your initial question um mat where sometimes the, the 12 step um you know might be a little challenging for some folks and and you know the the like the naa community depending on the types of meetings they come around to recognizing it where it's not so I guess, um, attacked in a certain period of time. Um, there are some meetings that are, you know, it's absolutely, you're just, you know, doing one for the other type of deal. Uh, but then we've heard from other clients that somebody recognizes MAT as a, as a good tool. Um, so, you know, you just refer to the Be Betty Ford Foundation, you know, um, Daryl Strawberries Group, you know, they, you know, some of those have started recognizing the MAT um, perspective of, of treatment. Absolutely. Hey, Bill, uh, I had a really, I'll give a quick shout out to a, a friend of mine, Spencer Palmer, New Roads Behavioral Health out in Utah. Great, great dual diagnosis program and very heavy emphasis on mental health. Um, sure. All in network doing great work. But uh, 
I'll, I'll tell you what, Bill, um, Spencer told me, and he's an old school AA cat that has been in the industry for many years and been sober for many years. And he told me, he said, I can't help somebody if they're dead. And uh, medication assisted treatment can help that person become the best version of themselves. If, if they're dead, can't do it. Not possible. So I, I thought no. that was really neat. And I, I, think it, I think it comes full circle with your mission, just trying to help your community. Um, you know, whether it's 12 step or MAT, just meeting clients where they're at. Is that fair? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's 100%. 100%. Yeah. And so in, in order to provide this care, I mean, inevitably, you, you mentioned it earlier about, you know, it's, it's definitely not a money, money generator per se, especially if you're dealing with outpatient, maybe drug court, and um, yep. dealing with the lower level of the community. But yep. community, nevertheless, let's talk about it from a business perspective. I, I knew you were using, an, and of course, no bad mouth in here, but you were using an electronic health record system before. And for those of you listeners that don't know what an EHR is, it's an electronic health record system that helps manage all of your clients, uh, manages your intake documents. You're able to, uh, to, you're able to fill out all your documents. It automates a lot of the system for you, scheduling, clinical, medical, all the way through to even billing and claims. You were using a system before, Bill, that it got you off, off your feet, right? Substantially, yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's um, okay. It, it, it is because, you know, this is not, um, you know, we deal prime miller, you know, and let's, let's call a spade a spade, uh, you know, with, with our market, especially in downtown Dayton, uh, most of our clients um, are, are Medicaid uh, clients. Um, so it, it, you're not, we're not rolling in cash by any means, you know, we have to still pay for our lease and we have to still, you know, uh, pay payrolls and things of that nature. But, um, you know, we used, uh, we used the system um, where, and this is one of those deals where you kind of learn as you kind of go. The one thing that I would tell folks, you know, going into this, I didn't know anything about billing, um, but I know a lot of people in the industry and we kind of, Myself and my my partner that opened up the program uh, worked with a worked with a group and thought it was going to be you know just as easy as that. And um, I learned very quickly that um, not all systems are the the same. Um, there's a lot of uh, differences, and, and it's hard. It's kind of like the same thing is you kind of got to get educated in it. And I didn't spend a a lot of time. I just thought everything was the same. And um, our billing the billings portion of it got really out of whack and I couldn't explain it. I didn't know why, you know, we're kind of week to week type of deal with, with getting stuff off. And then we, um, we introduced the, um, um, Asley program and, you know, like I've told, uh, Joyce at Asley and, uh, Coletta as well. I said, you know, the first weekend of me doing it and I'm not a billing guy, you know, we don't have that many codes, but, the first weekend of doing that, um, I, I woke up the next morning when they ran the uh, the billing cycles through one of the big payers in, in Ohio, and it was it was like night and day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's when I kind of really knew that okay, you know, you, you live and you learn, and um, you got a you got a good solution now, and you know, kind of build off of that. So yes, that was hard. It was hard to sleep at night. It was hard to you know. So the, the, the two things that I, want, I don't want impacted in any way um, is uh, clients, number one, and my staff, number two. So okay. and I, there was no way in, in God's green earth that, um, you know, those people wouldn't be taken care of. You know, we would figure it out on the back end. But, um, you know, it got into some tough times sometimes, but we, we finally kind of got out of it. So. Hey, those priorities, Bill, I think are quintessential, and I think more of our listeners need to, need to abide by that, <laughs> right? It, yeah. it's, it, let me say it again for everybody. Client safety, right? Client care, number one, and then number two, staff, right? Yep. How happy are your staff? And, and then if I may add a third there, Bill, is you got to get paid, right? And that kind of- Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, totally. Industry. Yeah. Yep. Got to get paid. Got to make sure your doors stay open because you could be providing the best client care in your, in your state. But if you can't get reimbursed for the care that you're providing, uh, you are Doesn't not. Matter. Yeah. Better, better start a church or, or maybe go the nonprofit route in that, yep. in that regard. Yep. 
Um, so, yep. so you switched over. You you did mention it, and thank you for for that. You did mention that you switched over to Asley and our our product, Asley Rise. It's it's very specific to just mental health, addiction treatment, behavioral health, and there is an RCM component, revenue cycle management, that helps with billing and claims. And so, Bill, you you would you would went from being on an electronic health record uh, and using a third party biller, right? Yeah, so basically we use the we use the platform um, for the billing, but then we also contracted on top of that with the biller just to run the, the stuff because we didn't know how to do it, honestly. Yeah. So there was, you know, basically it's a twofold hit. Mm -hmm. And so a, a lot of people, uh, owners, directors, managers, supervisors, they don't realize uh, the fragmentation when you do decide to go uh, – to a system, right? They think, hey, right. system means um, reducing processes, making it more efficient. So, hey, I'm, I'm doing the right thing here. Um, right. But hey, this happens very often, Bill, where uh, owners say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start implementing technology. And then they get a little bit overwhelmed and all, all of a sudden bills start adding up, right? Yep. Yep. And, and then bills aren't coming in. And then on top of that, you're not, you're not collecting. Correct. And so your challenge, if I'm right, Bill, was, was getting paid. Hundred percent. I mean, that's that's at the end of the day. We we provided the great care. Um, we got people in the door. Um, we did all the processes you need, and we have you know the all the foundation kind of laid. But at the end of the day, we weren't getting paid. Um, and and it, you know we were getting paid a little bit here and there, but it was just a little bit. You know what I mean? It wasn't the, the numbers didn't add up to me when I finally started digging into it and like i said you know i take responsibility for for uh, you know being more and more on top of it but i just assume that's the way that it worked but something didn't make sense to me and so that's kind of when i started you know going out um and looking for some other options to do it with and again i've never built anything in my life so <laughs> the fact that i can go on there and build myself and, and that's what that's what i wanted to make sure is no matter what happened to my staff or whoever if they come and go or whatever who's in charge of it is that well, i'm not going to be in a position where like well who's going to do this for me you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day i can do it myself if i needed to and then go from there so the fact that i can do it myself and knock it out you know i'm i'm, I'm in a much better position from that standpoint if there are two things that our listeners pick up from this podcast, it's that one, Bill never did billing before. That's Ever. Funny. Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing is that he was paying. I mean, you were, what, 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 ballpark it, Bill. You must have been paying a bill or anywhere between, I know this is huge, but what, 4 to, to 10%? Uh, but we were in the 6% ring. I'm sorry. We were in 8% for the first six months. And yeah. then the uh, remaining was, um, uh, 5%. Yeah. So, very common, yeah. very, very yep. common, very common, uh, uh, right there. And yep. look at that now, now bill is billing and now he saves, you know, eight, 6% of his total collected revenue and he's billing himself. So yep. And, and thank God she, they weren't good at it because they, you know, I, I didn't have to pay the full amount because it was based on what was collected. So if I look at the, the, on the other side of the spectrum, <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. thank God I wasn't that far ahead. And, um, you know, and, and the learning, like, and I, I just want to pop in here too. And this yeah. is talking about what, you know, I, and I had a chance to enjoy with, with Asley has been unbelievably helpful and she understands kind of where I'm at and she's kind of, and I'm talking about elementary, phase of billing and she's been very helpful in regards to getting me up to speed on doing things and you know asking questions and you know things of that nature um you know the question was is you know if i bill something on this day you know with medicaid they do runs every thursday and, and saturday right so if i bill something on you know on uh wednesday at two o'clock um pretty much if it's in bef before five o'clock i should be getting reimbursed for that claim based off of um, the Thursday morning run. Well, it was over a month after seeing some of this stuff uh, on the other system being built and it just wasn't going through. I didn't see any issues with it. Mm -hmm. And then once I jumped on the, uh, the Asley system and that's what I asked Joyce, I said, Joyce, why, what is, what is the difference and what, you know, why am I getting, you know, when I run through the Asley system 
and she kind of explained to me the real time, um, the real time claim process and yes. things of that nature. And I know I'm dumbing it down, but that's that's at the end of the day, it's just it's it's live to my the way that I look at it. So, that's the secret sauce. That yep. is the secret sauce. I yep. was going to ask you what between you and me, what do you think the secret sauce is? But uh, you nailed it. You nailed it right there, Bill. Is that the billing mm -hmm. system? Everything is in real time. Um, yep. And then what else is in real time is the reports. So you went from yep. Bill, who's never billed anything in his life, you know, that was shelling out eight, six to eight percent of his total collected revenue. Bill, I'm not gonna lie, you sound like an expert right now. You're telling well, me when you're getting paid. You're telling me how you're doing it. You're telling me what the secret is of the industry, um, man. And and everything's right at your fingertips. So. Yep. Yep. That's the big difference. You know, I, I know what's going on now. I can see, um, I can see kind of, I can kind of track to see from the scheduling software and, you know, the shows and no shows and things of that nature. Um, it, you know, what, what the billable hours that the counselors are doing and things of that nature. I mean, that goes a, a long way. Um, you know, we've got a nurse, we've got an LPN um, that does nursing services on one end, but is also a certified counselor that kind of carries a very small caseload, but he still carries a caseload. So um, he's a very, very um, a busy guy, but he's the best in the business. There's no doubt about it. I've got a nurse practitioner that I I've never worked with anybody better. And then my, my sidekick, my right-hand man, um, Brittany, which has helped me from the start and has went through the growing pains with me. And then I've got an LICDC, Becky, that is very knowledgeable in the industry and, um, you know, provides a ton of good solutions and good options for the clients. So, I mean, you know, I, I look at it from a dream team. I don't have to be there every single day. I don't have to do this. I, I can see the numbers and I can I can make recommendations to Brittany, which she filters it down to the crew and then, you know, kind of go from there. So yeah. um, all that, all those type of things are, are helpful. You know, I want to give, I want to give your staff some kudos there, Bill, because uh, I did deal with, uh, with Derek and Brittany and, uh, you know, I was speaking with, with them on uh, during the whole process of getting y'all uh, going and, and, and live. And uh, you really do have a very friendly staff that are experts in their own right in their yep. field, uh, whether it's Brittany on the business side, whether it's Derek on the nursing side, um, your staff knows what they're doing. And I'm sure your clients and their families feel really safe when they 100%. go to Miami Valley recovery. That's, that's the, that's the number one thing. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, we've said this from before and it's not, um, punishing somebody for a relapse or a slip up or anything like that. Um, some of the folks that come to us, it's like, you know, they want to, we want to try to get that, you know, I, I, we say that the lying, the manipulation is a part of the disease, right? Sure. So we try to get that out of the way. It's like, listen, if, if something happened, let's work on it. We're not going to, um, we're not going to, um, you, know, you know, punish you or take your medicine away or make you, you know, be here, you know, five days a week five hours a day i mean that's not that's not the goal it's like let's get down to the core issue and let's see what we can do next time you know and i t I, t I tell stories a lot of clients when i kind of pop in you know steve jobs had a you know he's got a great that the, one of the last books about steve jobs was and i tell the same exact thing because i really business and recovery as crazy as that sounds yep. but it's like you know steve jobs said you know i've never failed in my life right so you know i, I always said you know that kind of yeah. comes off as arrogant or you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, he said, I've only learned from all my, my mistakes. So, and he's failed a lot and learned a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're, I'm talking on an iPhone right now and I'm sure that, you know, everybody in your office has an iPhone. So he's changed the world. So that's kind of my, my message and my purpose to the folks there is like, you know, listen, failure is, is, um, is a part of anything you do, if it's in business or if it's in your life. And, and our goal is to, kind of gets you set up because at the end of the day when you're you know you know six years in recovery and you're doing great and you've got your, your kids back and your family and you're working a job and stuff like that something bad's going to happen it's how you're going to react and hopefully the tools that you get from miami valley recovery 
will be instilled into your 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 DNA on what you do that next time, right? So I always tell everybody, you know, the worst day you've had in, in the last year, you always run, run across your old dope boy or something like that. It's just a coincidence how all that happens, right? For sure. So what do you do? What do you do? And what do you do in that situation? So yeah. that's kind of what we're um, – it, it's just much bigger than, like I said, giving somebody a pill or just saying, hey, uh, relapse prevention. It's totally bigger than that. Absolutely. And, and uh, what I like that you'd mentioned, you'd mentioned something about truth. Um, and I think the, the foundation, the foundation of the relationship that the families have with your, with you, right? Yep. Uh, and I think that the relationship that you have with your staff, and then the relationship that, you know, you all have with us is all predicated and built off of trust, right? You trust that your staff yes. is there. The families trust that you have their client, their, I mean, their child, their brother, their sister, their father, their mother, you have their best interest uh, right. as number one. And then you trust that, listen, the system's not going to break. And you trust that, hey, I've already negotiated this rate with Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Humana, whatever. Right. I trust that I'm going to get paid. And I trust that my, cl my clinicians are taking strong notes to get me paid. Yep. And, uh, it all revol revolves around trust. And, um, you know, if, if I could bring things to a close, Bill, what helpful hints would you share with any of our listeners going back, you know, a couple months or six months, a year back, or maybe even to the very beginning of when you started at uh, Miami Valley Recovery in, in 18, what, what would you tell our listeners one helpful hint? Well, God, man, I've, I've learned, I've learned a lot, you know, and I, I kind of joke around with my partner. Um, he's, uh, he, he's a, he's a, uh, in addiction medicine, obviously, but he's also an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we kind of joke about it a little bit. It's like, man, I mean, what we have, you know, we feel like we're like a year behind just because of all this, all the, like, just decisions or what we, you don't know what you don't know type of deal. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what I would probably do is, you know, you obviously if you, if you do something or take that next step is, you know, do your research, you know, what, you know, in regards to systems and things of that nature, the biggest thing that hurt us was um, the billing component of it in regards to we should be probably, you know, eight months ahead of schedule where we are today if we would have put that in place in the beginning um you know we, we, like i said we've we, you and i have talked about this we deal with the medicaid population and i look at you know the first thing is i always look at the, the first number on you know the cost of the system or whatever and it's like when you start to sit down and think about it um it's by far you know it's obviously worth it right so you know if it, it's if something can help you get paid or get reimbursed to be able to get you there to that point and expand your program um it's a it's a good way to uh invest your money and all that good stuff so um i mean that that's probably the biggest thing um you know we, we've had you know we had challenges with you know getting certified to the state and that whole process do we go through the state or do we, do we go through car first so we got through the state first and then we're gonna go through car we learned if we did this again that we'd have to go we would want to go through car first and then go through the state because it's much 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 quicker so stuff like that you know it's just one of those deals where you, you just kind of you learn those type of things but um you know the the software billing and that type of investment um you know not paying just you know 70 bucks a month for a system that bills for everything is going to be the end all be all you know you hear that old you know, you, you, you get what you pay for type of deal. So, mm -hmm. But, but it, it's the same thing with anything, right, Bill? You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you have families every day, Bill, that, and of course, we, we can't compare one-to-one -one here, but I'm sure you have families every day that come to you and say, hey, you know, why, why, why should I send my child here? Why should I send my father here, my, my mom here, my sister here? You know, when, when uh, you know, can't we just take them to, to church and, and, and – yeah. You no, know? and you have to you have to get them to understand the value behind it. And yeah, you you can try that over and over and over again. And let me tell you from experience from from my family members, it doesn't work. You got to find yourself a program that's going to work for your family member. Right. You got to find leadership that that can see eye to eye with what your your family's goals are, and have a really good treatment plan put together and just work step by step. And in that regard, when I put it into those very simple terms, Bill what you and I do is not very different. 
and and if I can make it a little bit lighter, I'll tell you. I I talk to I talk to treatment centers that maybe have been around for thirty years. Bill, they've been using paper for thirty years. Yep, they've been able to make it work, right? Dysfunctionally, yep. but make it work. Tell me, Bill, how many times have you spoken to a family where the prospective client has been using meth for thirty years, using heroin for twenty years? They've made it work. They think they're right. okay. They're not. Right. Right. They're not, they've made it work. It's, it's, it's crazy. They've made it work, but now it's yeah. time to really help them get on the right track. And we feel like-minded if we were to break it down conceptually like that, if you've been in, in, in the industry for a while, you've been using paper for a while, you've been using fragmented different systems, you've been using a couple different EHRs um, and billing systems. Listen, there's value behind a good program. Just like there's value behind a good treatment program, there's good value behind a good electronic health program, uh, health record program. And uh, Bill, you're using one of them, and, and God bless the, the clients that are at your facility and the families that you're, you're helping and taking care of. Um, they're in great hands. And, um, you know, Bill, you've been using our, our program now for a couple months, and uh, you definitely are one of the many, but I would definitely say one of the ones that we are extremely proud to serve because of the work that you do for your community in Dayton. Well, I appreciate that. We appreciate that for sure. Yeah, without a doubt. Hey, Bill, um, so that wraps things up for me. If there's anything that you want to say specifically about Miami Valley or um, maybe anything new, new programs, new staff, maybe you're hiring, you're looking for people, what can I do to help you right now, Bill? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're growing kind of slowly um, with baby steps. Um, we've, we've been posting some um, opportunities on www.miamivalleyrecovery.com. Mm -hmm. um, check it out. We've, we've started a new specialized program in Dayton, Ohio, specifically for women. Um, uh, we call it the MOB program, M-O-B. Um, those are for pre and post pregnant women. Uh, it stands for mothers on buprenorphine if that's what they need to go on. Um, we've been working with the children's services worker, the family courts and things of that nature. Treatment plans really specialize in it. Brittany leads that program up. Um, we've got a gr IOP group specifically for women that, um, that have newborns that are in, uh, uh, uh assisted living right now that um, they're able to like a changing table in there they can bring their up to a year old to our program in this specific group and um, it just accommodates them and, and from there so we're trying to get more specialized in, in those different those different uh, avenues keep doing the hard work in Dayton if you ever do expand out to other areas please let us know uh, Bill I, I'm, I'm sure other areas uh, surrounding communities also need the help well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. No doubt, Bill. Hey, thanks so much for joining, man. I hope that covered all the uh, all the topics that you wanted to cover. They certainly did for me. Yep. Nope. Uh, that's that's uh, it's a real world, real life scenario of the of the program. So oh. where we're at, where we where we where we're at now, where we were, and where we want to go. God bless you. Take care, man. This concludes our first episode on Talking Treatment. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for our next release on a different topic with a new guest.